I'd like to reassure you all that in all of my 400 papers I have written, the most difficult of those papers was to formulate the question correctly. And I can also tell you that I, sometimes I have not formulated the question correctly. I have discovered it later. And I have repented that I should have spent more time thinking before taking the first step. I encourage you all to spend more time thinking about the question. All right. Now I tell you something about a writing tip to use the question to write the title of paper uh, or the title of your thesis. So you can imagine that to get to the moon took uh, millions of dollars, hundreds of companies, thousands of people, many years of work, and all of this was just described in three words, on the moon. And then with a little something after that, which has seven words. And then there is more detail described, right? And you can see that people will probably not read this detail they will only read the title and the subtitle, maybe the abstract a bit more. So my advice on writing titles is around the length of a tweet, that it should be very specific and it should use elements from the question. Put in question marks inside your title. If the title has, uh, and your title should comply with the instructions of your university's guidance for thesis or the reporting guidelines of the journal. And if there is no abstract allowed, then the title can give result. And here I give you an example of a title from one of my papers, published papers. You can see that I've given the study design. I've also given the intervention. And I think within what I've described, the outcome is also implicit. So can you see that how the title uses the information from uh, your structured question? And I'll go on and give you one more example. In this title, you can see that the set design is described, the intuition is described, and the outcome is described. So I hope you can see that the exercise of constructing the question is to get your question right for your research. But it's also very helpful to formulate the title of your paper or the title of your thesis. The next question is how to convert this question into a search strategy for a systematic review. So from the same paper that I showed you a moment ago as an example of a title, here you can see that the intervention was described as tests for prediction. It's a whole load of tests for prediction. The participants are women with pre here. And here are the complications amongst women with pre can develop and that we would like to use through systematic review. in order to find tests that can predict these complications, later development of these complications. So you see that the formulation of the question can lead to identification of the search terms, 
So literature search emerges from the question In simple terms, you can take the population test outcome design. For each case, you can identify search terms. And I'll show you an example of how that can be done in a second. But basically, you should apply these search terms to capture all the evidence by putting them into various databases. And the first thing you need to do is to search for existing reviews of your question if you're going to plan a systematic review. So going back to this question, we have search terms. We first convert those search terms into combinations using AND and OR. This becomes the search strategy. And this search strategy should be defined in Appendix 1 and Figure 1 of your published paper or in the chapter of your thesis. And you can do that via PubMed, where you can search for hash terms. And if you registered in PubMed, your search will be stored. You can combine the various terms using AND or OR. So here is an example from the same title that I showed you a moment ago. All of the terms for the population are combined with OR. All of the terms for tests are combined with OR. You can see that constructing the search term combination requires a lot of thinking. There are more than 96 terms already. By the time we come to come the search terms for tests and outcomes, and these are all combined within the outcome. So you have now three sets combined with all, and then you combine them with and. Does that make sense? So this type of detailed information should be included as a table, as an appendix in your thesis chapter or in your published paper, more like an appendix in your published paper than as a table in the published paper. And uh, all of the information can be summarized into a figure like this. So here is the figure concerning the population. All of these combinations occur via OR. All the tests were combined via OR. Outcomes were combined by OR, and they were all combined by AND, and this information should be presented as figure one. At this stage, I'm very happy to take any questions. <clears throat> Let's see, what's the question? <clears throat> okay, so in general, there are not any tools or programs that can search and collect literature from all the databases all at once. And people who are working in artificial intelligence are developing these types of tools, including in my own university here in Canada. Uh, so, yes, systematic review is a lot of work. How long will it take for artificial intelligence to get there? Uh, if you ask me realistically, it will be definitely after your thesis has been submitted and passed. So please don't expect for it to be available for your use within your thesis work. In fact, you can 
imagine that there could be many people like you doing a PhD about how to develop these tools. Maybe if one of your supervisors works in artificial intelligence, you can ask them if they would like to work in this area with you as part of your thesis work. Anybody wishes to make any more comments other than the difficulties of conducting the well, artificial intelligence require the use of artificial intelligence requires programming knowledge or computer science expertise. But to conduct searches in Embase and PubMed, etc., does not require co computer programming knowledge. It requires understanding your question. It requires understanding how the mesh terms or index terms or keywords will capture the concepts related to your question. That does not require programming knowledge. So, Marisha, I will ask, answer your question about how many studies can there be in a systematic review in just one second. I ask you a question, you all a question. To consider, can there be a systematic review published with zero studies included? Ah. Nika asked me a question. What is Jaka? I think your no is answer to my question. There cannot be a systematic review published with zero studies. I believe that is what your no is about. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. It would be helpful if other people could also think about the answer to my question. But coming back to Nika, remember meta analysis is only a statistical technique used at the end of performing a systematic review. Meta analysis is nothing other than performing a specific statistical analysis inside a systematic review. Does, does that make sense, Nika? Or if you are confused, I will need to go back and explain that basic concept. Alexander will come back to... Okay, Alexander will come back to answer your question, why not, in a second. Let me just uh, see if we can go back to my slides. So can there be a review published without studies included? Here is a systematic review published in the BMJ. It's about accuracy of signs and symptoms in acute conjunctivitis. It conducted a search and found 6,872 references. And it found only one eligible study. and found that this eligible study had such a poor quality that it could not be included in the systematic review. So in fact, you can see that even a top journal like BMJ has published a systematic review with zero studies included. <laughs> so you can see that in a systematic review, the process is important. Any colleagues have comments about what you have just seen? Thank you. Uh, I think I think the slide explained your point, Alexander. Good point. Okay, so we're going to move to the next stage which is thinking about uh, how to convert your question into 
Title Objective Search. This is something I'd like you to do on your own. Perhaps during the rest of the day before we meet tomorrow. And I hope if some of you have had opportunity to time and opportunity to do this exercise, then we can discuss your example with colleagues tomorrow. How does that sound? Great. So, Maja, thank you. I take your answer as a general answer on behalf of all the colleagues in the group. At this time, I would like to show you a little bit about how you can use information from the structured question to write the objective statement of your abstract and the introduction section of your paper. So, I don't know if you have had a chance to ever come across checklists like Prisma. Have you come across anything like Prisma before? No. All right. So, let me see if I can quickly jump to, jump to Prisma and show you show you Prisma what that is, so that we can address this point straight away. Okay. There is something called Equator website. In the Equator website, and I'd encourage you all to check out this website sometime before tomorrow, you can find all different checklists that exist to help you in determining what should be reported in your submitted manuscripts. And these are the various names for the different checklists. So Prisma checklist found on Equator website concerned systematic reviews, which is the topic of today. So Prisma checklist looks like this. It tells you what to write in the title and the abstract and in the objective section. And you can see from here that it is asking you to use components of your question called participants, interventions, exposures, outcomes, and study design to write your objective. And Prisma P is a checklist or writing protocol of systematic reviews. And you can use the information from Prisma P. Uh, so here I was showing you an example of a published systematic review where Prisma checklist describes the various components. Acqu according to Prisma checklist, these components are described in the same way as in the example I showed you a moment ago. And here is a recommendation on registering your systematic reviews before conducting your systematic reviews. So your review becomes a prospective study. Remember, we said that a prospective study is one where the protocol is written before the research is undertaken. And this title that we've seen a moment ago was a published protocol of a systematic review published in a peer-reviewed journal. And the Prisma P checklist is a tool to use for testing with how to write protocols for systematic reviews. And we have seen the equator checklist now already. Prospero is the database for registration of systematic review topics. And this is also a website freely available where you can register your review. And it gives you guidance on how to register. And now I tell you a little bit about how 
to construct the objective part of your introduction. in the manuscript that you will write or in the chapter that you will write in your thesis. And remember that thesis chapter or a published manuscript is not a textbook chapter. So it's not necessary to describe a lot of detail about, about um, Review in a systematic review paper or in a systematic review chapter concerning it is basically you can focus on describing use systematic review. What is the disease burden? Then next you can describe why you need it, and in this case you need to describe whether there are no systematic reviews or if there are existing systematic reviews, but they are of poor quality or they are not to date. So once evident that there are no systematic reviews or no reviews of good quality or no up-to-date reviews, you can then conduct your new systematic review. And then we'll come back to cover this later. The next section that you need to write is a section concerns the objective. Concerning your objective, the key thing in your objective is to define Give me a second till I find the correct uh, correct slide. Um, Right, so here we are about concerning the objective. <clears throat> you need to describe the objective using participants' interventions and outcome. And this information can directly go into the third paragraph of the introduction. Can you see that? So for homework for tomorrow, where we are discussing, where I'm encouraging you to convert your question into an objective statement and think about the search strategy. I'd like you to draft two or three lines that will describe your objective. So to write something on the line that the objective of my thesis or my chapter four or my paper was to evaluate amongst participants blah 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 the effect of intervention or exposures blah 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 and outcomes blah 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 using the design this control study or a cohort study. Make sense? So we have been together for nearly an hour and four minutes. I think we have covered quite a lot today. My proposal would be that uh, at um, 
I stop talking uh, at this time. I go back to uh, I go back to um, where we were. So I just like to very quickly uh, remind you where we stand. So we have so far covered how to frame a question and how to plan literature search. Also figured out how to write the title of the paper or the chapter or the thesis using the question you to use your question to construct an objective statement also to think about the literature search strategy for your question and prepare the objective statement and the question for tomorrow and at this stage i like to leave our uh, last uh, 15 minutes open for discussion, comments, questions, as well as any wish list to be covered for tomorrow and day after. Okay, so um, I'm very happy to take any questions at this stage. Can I just check that the task for tomorrow is clear to everyone? So that, that's good. Some questions coming in. So that, that's good. Thank you. So uh, first, uh, my chair, your question is, uh, okay, I, you ask me to sum it up again. So I would like you to construct an objective statement of your question, of your structured question that you will use to write inside your chapter, thesis chapter, or your manuscript for publication. This is only two or three lines, so I'm not asking you to write a long thesis. Simply three or four lines, maximum, on which I can comment tomorrow as to whether it describes your structured question clearly enough. Okay, and then I'd like to cover Ava's point about uh, mesh terms or not in just one second. Um, what if you do not have a question? Well, Katharina, then I guess for someone like you who does not have a question yet, you can think about a number of questions and bring them for discussion tomorrow. I have no problem discussing a range of questions, but someone like you will be able to benefit from others who bring examples of their own worked questions. 
Eva, your question is uh, um, about strategies. And yes, you're confused. Yes, about mesh terms, actually. Um, I was wondering if we only use mesh terms and these Boolean operators, or how do you call it, call them, and on, or or. Um, we probably use a lot, um, leave a lot of studies out, don't we? If we only use mesh term words. You are right. I don't recommend using mesh terms only. I recommend using mesh terms along with free terms. So, uh, okay. if you don't mind, I'll just go back to my slide to give you uh, to go back in the slide to take you to what I was describing earlier, um, or maybe forward because I can't go back. Okay, so I summarize for you. You choose search terms, and the search terms are both mesh and free text terms. And then each of these set of free terms within a concept are combined with or. So I show you an example of that. Under the population, the term preeclampsia. Eclampsia, versions of preeclampsia, blah, 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 are all, as you can see, combined with or. So within one concept, the mixture, mesh, and free text combined with or. And when this is complete for each concept, and by each concept, I mean each component related to participants' intervention and outcome. These concepts are together combined with end. Does that make sense, Eva? Yeah, it does. I can see it now. And just to emphasize this a little further, this can then be described in the figure. So you can see that when you combine with or, the number becomes very big. Three million, more than three million patients. But when you combine them with and, this is what brings the number down. Can you see that? Yes. Is that clear? Yeah, it is. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now this brings back to the chat and uh, any, any, any comments or questions that colleagues have. Please feel free to come forward. Okay, if there are no, no okay, is, uh, is everything you presented today in your book? Yes, and more than what I've said. Yes, it's all there. And uh, yes, where can you find my book? Let me see if I can find it for you uh, quickly. If you go, if you search, so here is my website called professorkhalidkhan.com. And if you go at the bottom of the site, you will see Amazon. And on Amazon, you can find my book. So, th so this is the easiest way to find my book. Uh, for anybody who's looking for the book. Make sense? Right. Then, uh, take us back to the uh, task for tomorrow. From a framed question, construct an objective statement and think about the search strategy. 
That makes sense to you, right? This is more or less what the activity is for tomorrow. And now, and I'd like about tomorrow. What if you have anything specific in mind for me to cover? Okay, I'd also like to ask if uh, if what I presented was clear, and is there anything I should change or could change to make tomorrow more active? To so say it was clear. Thank you, Gaber. It was. Thank you, Gaber. Uh, thank you also. Katrina, thank you for your comment also. Katrina, I'm sorry, pronunciation is not easy for me. Oh, well, look, most of you are. Okay. So it is that you are comfortable with the speed at which I'm working and the range of topics that I am covering with you. I'll stick to the same style. Uh, maybe we will cover a little bit less than what I had planned, but it is more important that we understand the things. Please ask me, what is your, Sarah, you ask a question. Nothing is too basic. So let us see what is what was your question. We could review the different study types. We will definitely cover the different study types tomorrow, Sarah. That's uh, definitely no problem. We, we will cover them tomorrow. That's part of my plan. Uh, but th but thank you for raising this. This is a this is a very very important. Remember, Sarah, we've covered two study types today. Well, at least three covered: cohort study, case control study, and randomized as a set of a cohort study. So we, we will we will review these study types one more time and look at what is specific about each oh, yes we will oh, well if there is not any more question or comment or suggestion, then I think it is okay for us to bring this session to an end. And uh, God, I can... Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for today. So, so I hand over to Matej to... Uh, I'm sorry, Matej, if I don't pronounce your name correctly, but I'll stop sharing the okay. screen. And uh, we'll, we'll wait Thank till you, you bring Thank to you. closure and then I will leave. Thank you very much for today. So we meet again tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Okay. Oh, at the same time. At the same time. Okay. Good, good night. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye.